Jewish. Lakewood certainly can use more housing. Since Lakewood is probably the fastest growing Jewish developer, they will knock the building down that your parents built and there will be housing there, which Lakewood certainly can use more housing. Since Lakewood is probably the fastest growing Jewish community, there are 55,000 Jews in Lakewood and there are 5,200,000 Jews in the United States according to the National Jewish Population Survey. So, and it's growing for a thousand new Talmidim, new students coming to the yeshiva a year. Most of them stay in Lakewood. They come from across the United States and from around the world. And after they come here for a year or two, they decide this is really where they want to stay, where they want to build their family. ambulance company in New Jersey is a yeshiva guy trucking, freight forwarding, customs clearing. They're, they're in every business. It originally used to be real estate, but over time they went into everything else. It was like the greenie, you know, they started, yeah, 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 yeah. they sold the farms, careful as you walk. We have a bismedrish immediately next door, and the program from that bismedrish keep expanding, and this is sort of a change station. For those programs. And this one should be ready by the end of the year. That's it. Wow. We started at the CFO and boom. We're yeah, learning. We started here um, right before the winter. Yeah. 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 We'll walk through. This is motion. So this is spring break, so the only people here are people who are on their spring break and they're studying anyhow. And, and, and yet another study hall. I don't know how many we've seen, but there's so many study halls over the various campuses here. Everyone has its own flavor. Everyone in one place. Having everyone in one place. I think practically it doesn't work. So a thousand kids in one place is a lot of spirit. Yeah, but also doesn't work because let's say you're learning uh, guitar and you want to hear a lecture on guitar. You want to hear a lecture on on uh, touching. So if you're all in one study hall, then you're gonna have so many lectures at one time. It just wouldn't work. Sorry. Primary collection is right here. Primary lending collection. Across the street, behind Basil Hill, behind the trailers, is a library where you cannot take out. Uh, you can use the swarm inside, but you can't. You can't borrow. And that has the goal of the is to have one of every safer that exists. So, and it takes years and years, decades to build that up. The solid swarm are there. I wanted the plaque, this plaque, to be here because this is immediately next to the library. And this library was dedicated by the Rosansky family, who were originally from Klutsk. So this building really has the original flavor, the closest to what was back then. Started by my grandfather, Ravarn, and finished by my father in 64. The this is all brand new. We gutted it and rebuilt it, but this kind of has still, this is called affectionately the Yasha, the old, even though it's probably the newest day in terms of the upgrades. So it's the library here? In the library. There's a swarm across the street. Oh, there may be awesome. some here. And I always knew the history of Saul Hebrew Day School. I didn't go there, but my sisters did. My brothers did. And I always Where knew the him. And, uh, and of course, I knew the Goldstein family. And primarily because on 6th Street, 7th Street, and 8th Street was the Goldstein family. And uh, when I was seven or eight years old, I went into the uh, maybe younger to the lumber yard and I'd say hello and it was a Hamish, a warm feeling, which I try to tell my kids that as I'd walk up and down Clifton Avenue, I knew every shopkeeper, the Jewish ones and non-Jewish ones. Uh, we'd start at the top and go down from uh, the locksmith, John the locksmith, we'd go down to Ross Jewelers, down to the bottom to Monison's Western Auto and as a kid you went yourself, you rode your bike, it wasn't a big deal, and 
you kind of knew everybody yet. It was a small Hamish, a little place. And getting the letter from California from this guy who I didn't know, I had no idea who he was, was brought back some old memories to me. But I didn't do anything about it. And a few years ago... Well, actually, we spoke once on the yeah, phone. we spoke once, yes. We spoke, had a nice oh, conversation. Oh, we didn't do anything. No, no, we didn't do anything. Shame. And a few years ago, we started a colo in Los Angeles, um, the second B&G colo in Los Angeles, this one in the Pico Robertson and Beth Jacob. And uh, we're, we've been building colo for many years. Um, we built about 13 in the last five years. Pretty much the only ones today who are involved in doing that in the United States. And we started this call, and I went out for the first job as the call was there. I was a scholar in residence. And uh, before I come out, I get an email from Bill Goldstein. And I said, I have to meet him. And I met Bill, and that reignited a very special, very warm friendship between Bill and Paul and, and the family, something that... Uh, really should have been done uh, way before. And Bill came out for... Uh, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. 2007. 2007. Paul came out for Rosh Hashanah. And uh, Bill said, you got to meet my brother Paul. And we had already made, formed that Kesher. And uh, we went to Tassel together. We met Paul. And um, we had some Suudas together. And we went to my brother's little shtibel on Laurelwood and for Mincha. for Mincha, and my brother said, but Salah Goldstein, there's a hespit of Ravaran of my grandfather if, if, on if, Salah. If I may interject. Absolutely. We walked into Zalman's little shul, and Zalman said, so you're um, but Salah's grandson. It's, it's, he says, it's amazing. I was just now reading. He was just then reading this hespit, the eulogy, that... Um, their grandfather gave at the funeral of of Bezalel. and I had no idea that um, we we were so honored, and and here it was. And then they proceeded to uh, translate from the Hebrew, which was a translation of the original Yiddish in which the the Chesbed was given, uh, the the eulogy, which Aaron has copies of here, and it was amazing because. I learned things about my, my grandfather, our grandfather, that your great grandfather, your great great grandfather, that you, you didn't you didn't know about. Like I didn't know that he was a graduate of the Telshi Yeshiva in Lithuania. Uh, that which was a piece of hidden information there. So um, and then Aaron and I got to talking, and um, I was really very um, impressed that. The idea for this tribute, this little plaque came from, from Aaron. I think it was a miracle, actually. Or, yeah. All of it was a miracle. Or beshert, but for sure. If you think about it, in the history of Kal Yisrael, there had probably been not more than three or four yeshivas of this size and scope in the entire history of the Jewish people. And certainly in the United States in the last uh, 2,000 years, other than Sur and Pumpadisa, which was about 1,400, 1,500 years ago, in the times of Rabbi Akiva, there have been a handful of yeshivas of this scope and a handful of opportunities for the development of Torah on this scale in the history of our people. And, uh, I, I tend to think of it in very simple terms, without, without getting into theatrics. Hashem created the world. Hashem created Klal Yisrael for a reason, as the center of the world. That's why we're on the front page of the New York Times every day. It's not happenstance. We've always been at the center of Jewish history because we have a primary and central role in the development of mankind and in, in, the, uh, in the flow of human history. And Kal Yisrael is the apple of Hashem's eye, and we have a divine mission that is, was given to us thousands of years ago. And that mission is built around the Torah, the study of the Torah. And that has always taken place in Kal Yisrael, in yeshivas. So in a sense, yeshivas are the apple of Hashem's eye. And this yeshiva is unique. It, the time in the United States is unique. It, the scope of Torah that is learned here is unique. And certainly its impact on American Jewry and on Klai Yisrael's history is unique. The Holocaust was the end 
of a close to 2,000 year period of Jewish history. The majority of Jewish history took place in Europe. And although there are still many, there are still many Jews in Europe, and there's still a Jewish, thriving Jewish culture in Europe, in places like France, in places like Great Britain, in Belgium, a little bit in Switzerland, some other countries, the center of Judaism has really shifted both to the United States and back to Eretz Yisrael. And if you look at the span of Jewish history, we're in a new era, perhaps what could be described as the third great era in Jewish history. The first was before the destruction of the temple, before the Chorban, when the Jews were in Eretz Yisrael. The second period was the European period. Certainly not all the Jews were in Europe, but most of them were in Europe. And then today, both in the United States as in Israel. There were a handful of key people who helped bridge Torah and Klal Yisrael from Europe to the United States and to Israel. And my grandfather was certainly one of those key figures, both in the United States and in Israel, in the redevelopment of Israeli uh, Torah and Israeli Judaism <coughs> through Chinuch through helping build the state of Israel through gun smuggling that he was involved with after the war. During the war years, Vadat saw the saving Jews and building Torah both here and in Israel. And in the history of the Jewish people, he's seen certainly as a pivotal figure. How did he come here? How did he manage to do this? There weren't 55,000 Jews in Lakewood. And the world that we have today, it didn't exist. And as a kid, I tell my children that as a kid, Lakewood was a very small place. We certainly were outnumbered by the Goyim. I was afraid to walk from Fifth and Private Way to the Yeshiva because I'd get a beating on the way. That was the that was you had, you had to be careful. So uh, you had to know which way to walk to get. And that's unfathomable to many people today. The Lake was such a big a big place. There were a handful of people who were instrumental in coming coming here. I want to say thank you. This is an old Lakewood. I was born...